Hey guys, how's it going? Today we get to take a look at some of your outdoor holiday decorations. I'm so excited to get some fresh inspiration and ideas uh, that I might even use in my own outdoor decorating this year. Now, if some of you missed the boat on submitting photos for this video, the next one we're gonna put together is on winter interest in the garden. We'll have a link below this video where you can submit photos for that, but I will talk more in detail about that at the end of this video. So let's just jump into the first submission, which is from Cat in Utah. That is a pretty front entryway. You know what I noticed first thing? I mean, other than the, I see the wreath and the garland, but the color of that front door is so pretty, especially with the brick. I've noticed that question a lot about, you know, what flowers can I plant in containers up next to brick? What looks the best? Well, I start to notice it more now as well because I do see that question often and we've been adding more and more brick around our home. So I really love to see what color others use with brick and that is a beautiful one. Oh, it's like a, Robin eggs, Robin's egg blue, am, am I right in that? That's so pretty. Uh, also, Kat said that Better Homes and Gardens came to photograph her home for their cottage country style, let's see. It says cottage style Christmas magazine last year, but none of the porch pictures actually made it in. It was just all inside stuff. So you can see that in last year's magazine, uh, but it's fun to see what the outside looks like as well. So you can see potted evergreens, and I don't know if are those real or fake. Those look like they might be like fresh cut trees sunk down in pots. I did that last year and it worked great. Next picture is the same porch, different year. So Kat said in order to change things up, she uses a mix of real and faux greenery as well as dried elements and things. And oftentimes she'll just change up the ribbon and maybe where she places certain things in the display to make it look different. And it makes it less expensive too if you kind of slowly add in that faux greenery and every year you have a little bit more to, to work with. Uh, that is really fun and a totally different look, seeing that with that creamy white door. Very pretty with that as well. Close up of the wreath, so you can see the real greens. So she's taken a real wreath and added her own spin with pine cones and some snow berries, uh, things like that. Oh, I love that. And this place in Utah's is zone 5B. She said at the base of the Utah Rocky Mountains, surrounded by herds of deer and elk up to 500 at a time, and even the occasional cougar. Next submission is from Crystal in Ontario, Canada, zone 3B. This is on the east, east shore of Lake Superior. That is so cold and I bet a lot of snow as well. Uh, but this first picture here, look at that beautiful, what do we call those? Like it's like a swag, right? A pine cone swag. <laughs> hanging from a carriage light with a bow on the top. So, so pretty. I love the mix of the pine cones and the evergreens. We did something similar. Was it last year or the year before we put together pine cones for the front sun porch, but it was a really fun project. Uh, I think yours looks better than mine. <laughs> Very good job. Um, Crystal does say that a lot of her Christmas decorations that she has out turn into just winter decorations afterward because it's a long season and they last um, for quite a long time. I think that's how it kind of goes for a lot of us. Next picture is of a wreath with some beautiful dried elements. I just love this look so much. Um, looks like some kind of a cedar underneath and then dried oranges in clusters of three with uh, bunches of cinnamon sticks. I like the balance in that uh, wreath a lot. Next, we've got a container with some greens and then a twig sphere. Very simple, but really effective and something that you can put out, I think, that looks really good for uh, Christmas. It definitely looks festive Christmas, especially if you were to pop a couple red berries in there. Then you could take the red berries out and let it just be winter greenery. And then, oh, here's another big arrangement. Dang, that one's pretty. So black container, it looks like there's a shepherd's hook maybe in it, holding a lantern. Red twig dogwood branches, maybe faux holly in there. Uh, twig sphere, there's a lot of elements, but you can really see each one of them. I mean, nothing is getting lost in here. Great big pine cones, beautiful Christmas ribbon, and a pair of skis right behind. It looks like in between maybe a pair of garage doors. That's a really pretty and like large uh, arrangement. And next one, we've got another one that has some really pretty seed heads in there. What are those? The, just some kind of a grass, did, did she say? Let me look. She did say she loves to go foraging for greens um, and, and other things from her own garden, fresh pine and cedar, red twig dogwood, birch branches, pine cones, and dried oranges. Um, but red berries are a little bit more difficult to find, but this one's gorgeous with the, uh, again, the cluster of dried oranges and the pine cones there, and then the mix of natural elements. 
And then a classic wreath with the greenery, the pine. Looks like pine, cedar. Is there a little bit of fir in there maybe? Or spruce, something like that. Red twig dogwood and then the red berries. Beautiful. Next is from Amy in Columbia, Illinois. Ooh, look at that color combination. That's beautiful. I, I really like that. Might have, to, might have to try that one out somewhere. That chocolate brown with the gold. It looks so, I can't even think of the name, but like rich. The colors are so rich. There's some magnolia in there, uh, gold ornaments, the great big pine cones. These types of arrangements too. I mean, if you're gonna make something like this or make a wreath, these are much easier to put together in my opinion um, than wreaths are because you can just kind of layer a bunch of stuff together, wire it and maybe glue a couple things in and you're good to go. That's really pretty. And matching container arrangement. So it looks like some pine, cedar, boxwood in there and hydrangea. Do you see that dried hand hydrangea tucked in behind the ribbon? A lot of just like the cream and the browns and the golds. That's set, that was Erin in my wedding colors. We did white all the way to chocolate brown with a little bit of cream, a little bit of gold. So, I mean, this is, this is it right there. Maybe that's why I'm so drawn to it. And then even drawing that down onto the top of this lantern here, filling the lantern, of course, with Christmas balls. A lot of different color in there and texture, even though it's kind of in the same color family. And then a repeat of the same ribbon, that's really pretty. Dried seed pods in there, love that. Great job. Next is from Dana and Molly in Clarksville, Arkansas. Okay, first picture is a shed in the middle of summer. So this must be a before, a before shot. Let's take a look at the after. Oh my goodness, what a perfect Christmas cottage. Whoa, huge improvement too to that first picture. Look again, look at the before, look at the after. The doors on the front are awesome. I love the black hinges with the wreaths. Okay, so uh, Dana says that she is a retired firefighter and she has a Dalmatian named Molly. They teach fire safety to children and so they call this Molly's Firehouse. How cute is that? There's like a little Santa's chair out there, Christmas tree. Let's see if there's another angle, yep. So the sign, I couldn't read the sign on that first one. It says engine company number one. That looks so classic and so cozy. A lot of buffalo plaid, which goes perfect, I think, in this sort of arrangement. And then the patio lights, I'm cor of course, probably make it look amazing at night. And there's Miss Molly sitting there. Oh, good dog. Oh, <laughs> and look at this. Molly on the decorating mobile right there. It looks like there's some tubs of decor getting ready to be put out. How fun is that? Great job on the transformation of that shed and making it so looks so cute. Next is from Abby in Ontario, Canada. Oh, we've got a really nice container arrangement here with some beautiful kale or cabbage. I can't, I can't tell the difference between kale and cabbage when they're ornamental. Uh, but she does say that she uses whatever is al alive in her fall containers and then just embellishes it for the holiday season. So she embellishes it from stuff she gathers from fields that surround her house and from her own garden. So the hydrangeas here are from her own garden and then the beautiful evergreens the blue and the green in there that's just so pretty and i love just that huge like fountain spray of hydrangeas that's really pretty oh there's another one the matching one let's see some dusty miller left in that one that's a pretty accent color next arrangement that's really pretty so a dracaena spike still left over looking really good and that looks really pretty with the red uh picks in there the red berries that really looks festive little pine cones and other little ornaments in there. And there's the other one. Oh, love those, Abby. Next is Angela from Markleville, Indiana. Oh my goodness, look at this porch with all the snowflakes. We've done snowflakes like this in front of Andrews, the garden center, in their windows, just like this. And I just love it. It looks just so winter. It can be either Christmas or just for the, all the winter months because that's what a lot of us, you know, are living with outside. It's kind of fun to amp that up, but that is really pretty. And look at this next picture, you guys, with the sleigh. There's a Santa and presents and the garland around the window. I bet you kids love to drive by and see your house. Next up is Debbie from Chesterfield, Virginia. Let's take a look at the first one. Oh, look at the snowman. Pumpkin snowman, It's that's been a while since I've done one of those. We did that maybe the first winter we were in this house. Maybe it's been five years or so ago. Really need to revisit that now that we have a little bit older kids who would appreciate it. 
That is so cute. So Debbie said she did use plastic pumpkins, which is a good idea. I used leftover pumpkins that we had, which was a fun way to recycle them. Um, and it worked for us because we stay typically, especially that winter, we stayed cold enough to where they just stayed frozen in the entire winter. So even though I drilled holes through the center of them, they never rotted. I never had any issue with that, but I could see where that would be a problem in more mild climates. You know, they just wouldn't last as long. But if you use plastic ones, you can use those pumpkin or the, yeah, the pumpkins as a snowman for the rest of time. <laughs> Probably, I mean, you would have those decorations for a really long time, and that looks really pretty with the ornaments. I love the ornaments clustered around the base. It kind of just draws down some of that uh, color. Really nice. Next picture is of a container arrangement with cardinals, which uh, she said is a tribute to the cardinals that live in her garden. White branches, which I don't know, are those natural white, like birch, or were they spray painted? They're really pretty. I did spray painted branches one year in containers and I really liked that. It's got a fun alternative to just using red. And then the red berry picks. Oh, and they're lit. I didn't even notice that in the first picture. So there are strands of light so that it looks really festive at night. And then another cute arrangement in a galvanized tub with the snowman. Oh, look at that porch, you guys. Who wants to go sit there with a hot beverage? There's a picture in the daytime with more cardinal. I didn't see that in the first one. Yeah, the cardinal in the arrangement there on the table. And the front door. Oh my goodness, you just go for it, don't you? Look at this. Front door with the garland, with all the bows and ribbons. You look like a professional with that ribbon. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, there's a daytime picture of it. I wonder how many spools you went through <laughs> for that project. I hope, you, I hope you store those and use that every year. For sure. That's a lot of work. Oh, to Luchin's bench. I don't know if that's how you say it. We have a couple of them, the black bench, I love it. Amazing effort. My goodness, you a lot of work on your holiday decorations and they look great. Next one is from Charlene. I do not know where Charlene is located, but look at these snowmen. So more of the pumpkin snowmen here. She said they were inspired by our video, which was years ago. And I the trio is amazing. I love it. And you guys are so good at putting stuff down below. I think all I did was pop some greens in down below. But it looks like you've worked in some snowflakes in the greens behind the snowman and then the um, pine cones and ornaments picks down there. Kind of bringing some of that interest down is such a good idea. Love it. Next one is from Sarah in Boise, Idaho, which is just down the road from us. I don't know Sarah, but that's exciting. Let's look at this first picture. Oh, this is a beautiful sparkly arrangement. And you know what I love about it? I mean, I notice the sparkle very first, but then I see the draping. It looks so elegant, the way that you have those greens in there. Instead of everything being kind of stiff, there's like movement in this arrangement and it looks so great. So silver and gold picks, some pine cones in there, and then just a mixture of greens, which uh, Sarah said she forages from her grandma's property. That's extra special. Um, she said she likes to do her backyard a little bit more rustic. So you can see here on the shed, a couple of beautiful natural wreaths and then the window box with, again, you're really good at creating the movement. See how those evergreens just drape out of that window box? And like, I can't even see the window box. So I don't know what the structure of it looks like. And this is what I wanna do in our window boxes. It just makes them look so full. Mmm. yes, great idea, Sarah, on that or just talent, <laughs> you are putting those in in a beautiful way. Next arrangement, so there's some hydrangeas, rose hips in that one, love the use of rose hips. Um, the blue spruce, pine, that's just really pretty. Oh, and then in this arrangement, we've got an obelisk in that one, a rusted one. That's a really pretty color, especially like contrasting those limelight hydrangeas. And then another one in an urn, my goodness with a cardinal in that one. That's really beautiful. And then, oh, a backed up look at that first arrangement with the wreath that's around the carriage light. I like how there's the same kind of interest in both of those. And then there's one with a topiary form. That's pretty. I love that there's, you know, sometimes the use of those more hard, it's not hardscape, but you know what I mean? Like harder elements to bring that vertical accent and then just kind of filling in with some fluff underneath. Oh, look at the geese. <laughs> How funny. So there's some geese which are all over in Boise, you guys, just everywhere in Boise. So this is quite perfect. And last picture, another obelisk with, oh, the pine is just beautiful. Now, does that come from your grandma's property? That's gorgeous. That looks like Ponderosa. 
They're huge long needles. Next one is from Harrison in Tennessee. Oh, we've got a beautiful wreath, you guys. That is gorgeous and it looks perfect. So Harrison said that he had tried to make a wreath after watching our videos a couple years ago and this is what came from it. Like if that was your first attempt at a wreath, like you have a gift. <laughs> wreath making is not necessarily the most easy thing to do. Like it took me several to get the hang of it. And even now I make some wreaths and I'm like, oh boy, I need the hot glue gun. <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of holes. So that looks awesome. You've got fur in there and seeded eucalyptus, which brings that bold blue. The seeds add the beautiful texture. Magnolia leaves are great. And then the variegate, it kind of looks like a euonymus, but I think it's, is it pittosporum? Is that what it's called? I don't know. I just ordered some yesterday. <laughs> Can't, I don't know the exact name of it, but beautiful mix of different natural elements there. And Harrison said it's already got around 15 pre-orders for this year um, of people who want him to make wreaths for them. That is awesome. Great job. Next one is from Yulia, who has a YouTube channel called Why Garden. It's a great one. You guys should check it out, but look at this garland. Oh my goodness. A handmade garland from things in Yulia's garden. So it's a mix of Leyland Cypress, Golden Mop Cypress, Arborvita. Uh, she said it was very heavy. It ended up uh, about 30 feet long. It took about six to seven hours to make. Uh, and they had to, she and her husband had to go up to the second story and pull it up with the rope from the center to get it kind of right where they wanted it and then run downstairs and secure the rest of it with nails. Uh, but they do take a long, garlands take a long time to make and they are very heavy. Erin asked me if I would um, want to make a garland for our balcony <laughs> to swag our whole balcony. I was like, no. I'll go buy the pre-made stuff down at Home Depot. So this is a huge effort, Yulia, and it's absolutely gorgeous. She said also she did um, tuck in some bittersweet berries uh, where she's from. It's an invasive vine and whatever they do, like park cleanups and things like that, um, she'll bring home a few branches because they've just ripped it all out, you know, of uh, wherever it's growing. And she'll use it in arrangements like that, which is such a great way to, you know, get some use out of it, even though it's not something that they want to be naturally growing. Um, right there and then look at this wreath it's made from uh, miscanthus grass seed heads and a Nellie Stevens holly branches all from the garden uh, with some added uh, lights in there some LED lights which really kind of I think that adds a huge amount having that little pop of light beautiful berries and pine cones that is gorgeous Yulia I love it and I think absolutely worth the effort because my goodness, you you can't you can't buy something like that. I mean, I suppose one could if we could order it from you. Um, but yeah, having something like that that oh yeah, I bet that you guys really enjoyed that. Next is from Grace in Cleveland, Ohio. Look at this window box, another gorgeous window box. You know what I love about this one? Well, first of all, Grace made this window box herself, which is amazing. I love the X detail in there. I love the teasel that you use. That's that little seed head that you're seeing, kind of that spray in the center as your centerpiece, um, kind of your thriller element along with a few other branches. That is such a beautiful texture in there. And then the mix of evergreens with kind of the pine being that bottom one, again, adding that beautiful movement. That is just absolutely beautiful. And then the Norway cone spruce wreath. So she said that in a huge windstorm, uh, the wind knocked out a whole bunch of uh, cones onto their lawn. So she gathered them all up. She had buckets full of um, cones that she just couldn't dispose of. And I'm glad you didn't. There's so many good uses for these pine cones, but this is a beautiful one. Um, she made several wreaths like this that are just secured to a wreath form with wire and then wrap some uh, lights around it. That's a really interesting wreath. And I, I'm guessing it wasn't tremendously hard to make, which is even better. <laughs> Next is from Kelsey in St. Peter, Minnesota. Look at this beautiful winter landscape. I know you probably get tired of seeing that after months and months of it in Minnesota. I don't know what zone you are, Kelsey, but I know you have a long winter. And so making things pretty to look at was is probably necessary. It would be necessary for me, for sure, to be able to look out and see some gorgeous things. And look at, I'm guessing this is a fountain right here. Kelsey said that um, she empties the fountains and then lines them with thick plastic and that, so that they're protected from excess moisture and such, and then puts soil in there and puts greens in and berries, whatever she can forage out of her, her yard and garden. She said that she tries to use as much as possible. She likes to challenge 
challenge herself to use things that she has on hand or around her, which I think is great. Um, here's a picture in the daytime so we can see a little bit more uh, detail there. I love the lantern in the center as well as those two pillars in the back. And so the two, two pillars in the back, I'm guessing this is a closer up look. I love that. I'm, I'm gonna talk to Aaron about these. <laughs> we need to have some of these around our yard, the brick pillars with the urns. We've been cons you know, considering doing pillars around the Hartley at the entrances, and I, haven't, I don't have anything there because I haven't decided exactly what I want them to look like, but might need to make them look kind of like these. That is so pretty. And the urns, what a gorgeous job you did. I can see some hydrangeas in there, branches, the greens with the beautiful movement. And then the arrangement here on the back, at the back door, she said in supplies, she only has $10 into this uh, because she gets things after Christmas um, on sale, clearance items, things like that, and saves them and is able to utilize them. And then like the great grapevine wreath form that she's used here with the greens on it and the bow, she's used it for several different seasons with just different things on it. And I think that's such a great thing that oftentimes we don't have to spend a bunch of money on every single season to decorate if we're resourceful and we just look around at what we have at our fingertips and sometimes you just have to kind of think outside the box you do get better at it as you, you know, kind of stretch that muscle you get better at looking at things in a different way and how you might be able to use them differently and Kelsey you've done a beautiful job next one is from Nicholas in Stratford Connecticut oh I want to live in that greenhouse that is absolutely gorgeous so Nicholas said he got this greenhouse as a kit and has made changes throughout the years, including like this last year, um, just made, he made the door. And that's a gorgeous door. I love the light over it. Well, of course, I love the Christmas lights here, or patio lights with the garland. The garland came from a floral. He made the magnolia wreath. That is just the most welcoming sight ever. I love the, the lit tree inside that looks so festive. So he says that he's only, he's 20 years old and has style, my goodness. You're gonna do some beautiful things. He said he's been watching us since we moved into our house and he runs a local gardening Facebook group with over 20K members to help with gardening and has an Instagram at My Formal Cottage Garden. I will check it out. Beautiful greenhouse, Nicholas. Next is Mary from St. Clair, Michigan. Oh. I love these baskets. I have some of these baskets. Look at that arrangement, you guys. Branches, greens, big pine cones. Are those faux flowers in there, I'm guessing? The white, that looks so wintry, and then the little twig sphere. I see the um, buried juniper in there too, bringing that little bit of blue color. The basket though. So uh, Mary says that she stained her basket with dark Dan Danish oil. I'm gonna do that. Mine are blonde. They're like a light blonde color. We have them in the root cellar with onions and potatoes and stuff in them right now. Um, but the garden center carries them and I think that is such a great idea. Oh, and I see the incense cedar too, sticking out the front. It's got the little yellow, uh, I don't know, seed heads right there, adding a little pop of color. That's really pretty. She said she was unsure whether or not she wanted to add ribbon in to you know, add a little bit more color or just leave them natural. I think that they're perfect just the way they are honestly I mean it's something you could change up every year you could try ribbon and live with it for a couple days too and see if you like it but I think what you've done here is just perfect uh, she said she had a ton of leftover greens so she did a manger uh, for her church that's really pretty I like the little like halo around the candle that's really nice Great job, Mary. Next one is from Kim in Nova Scotia, Canada. Oh, now look at this. Wow. Okay, so the container arrangement has a bunch of pine and berry branches and some lights. Again, I love the lights mixed in. The wreath has beautiful bells. There's skis and sleds and skates. Oh, that's so, so pretty. So each year, Kim said that they like to change it up every single year, but they use a lot of uh, kind of the same elements like some of the, uh, the other uh, submissions that we've looked at already, uh, but they forge a lot of natural elements themselves. So a lot of boughs and garlands are white pine and fir, and the berries are usually winterberry, cotone aster, or mountain ash. So let's take a look at the next picture. That one's in the sun, sunny day. I love sunny days in the winter time. It's, they're one of my favorites. You can see the geese and the snowshoes and the intense garland, that is nice. I love that with the snowflakes in the center. Oh, and look at the home 
at night with the snow. Oh. oh my goodness. Now, that's not a postcard. I don't know what is. That's beautiful. Oh, and then in the daytime, you can see all the big, cute ornaments in that blue spruce and the uh, wreaths on the windows. And then there's a, another look at another doorway there. Is that the same doorway? Different year. Different, yeah. So a little bit similar, but a little bit different. So this one has a little bit more of a natural looking garland. And I like the birch branches coming up out of the arrangements along with those great big branches of berries. I love that. And the wreath is gorgeous. And then here is another year where they've used, what is that called? That red netting stuff as a bow in the middle. And then the snowflake is on the wreath on the door. So see how you can use the same things and you really do get quite a different look. And then here's another year where there's just looks like a branch garland rather than greens and there's some lights worked in. And that was the last one. How did that go so fast? I feel like I could pour through pictures all day long. Thank you everybody who sent pictures out and all the information so that we could all be inspired. I know that not just myself, but so many other people glean ideas. We all glean ideas from each other and we're so appreciative of all of you who took the time to do that. Um, so the next video we wanna to put together, like I said earlier, is all about winter interests in the garden. So I'm talking like flower beds, what they look like with evergreens and maybe you have boulders or fountains, ornamental grasses, things that you leave up in the winter time that look really pretty. I know we are in desperate need, especially out in the South Garden, well, and really, everywhere in our garden of cultivating more winter interest and adding that in. So again, looking for some inspiration and ideas of things that work really well in your gardens. So we will have a link down below this video uh, where you can, you can follow that and you can submit your pictures, highest quality pictures possible if you would, um, and landscape if you have them. We do portraits as well. Of course, a lot of these today were portraits and that's how I take the majority of my pictures. It's hard to remember to do landscape, but if you do have landscape, those are easier for video to use. And that's it, you guys. I feel like I'm ready now. I feel like I'm going to go back through these pictures. I'm really gonna study them and try to put together something. I mean, Aaron's already well on his way with his Christmas spirit with the Christmas lights. I almost feel like I don't need to do much because our Christmas lights are gonna be so fun. I'm excited to show them to you. Uh, but we will have some outdoor decorating videos for you here fairly soon. Thank you all so much again. Thank you for watching this video and we will see you in the next one.